Acres and uh, acres. I'm really sorry. I'm <laughs> we've known each other. No a worries. Lisa <laughs> Kane, uh, a librarian at ESU, and I'll let I'll let you go ahead and tell them about yourself. That's great, Perry. Thank you so much. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to be able to join you this way. Now, I will make a confession. Um, there's part of me that wishes that I was there in person in Portland with you because I love being uh, talking uh, to students. Person. I also happen to love Portland very much, So, but this is the next best thing. Um, I'm actually speaking to you from my office here at home, and being, I want to be a librarian, but maybe if you a little experience, I might see a cut out of the camp behind me where I have my storage cabinet and so forth, so don't be too surprised if you see that. Um, as Perry indicated, uh, I am uh, the li uh, one of the librarians at the Emporia Campus Library. I am your liaison with the School of Library and Information Management. Um, if you've had a chance uh, or uh, if uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I sent uh, has been uploaded, I've got some contact information in there, and I also will be sharing that with you as we go along today. The other thing that I really want to make sure I cover today and I allow enough time to do so is I know that you all um, have already had uh, some instruction in your LI810, your research class. So I don't necessarily want to repeat maybe what you already know. I would like to build upon that, but I would also like to make sure that we have time today to answer any questions that you have not only for 801, your class right now, but also for your assignment that you're doing uh, right now with LI810, any roadblocks that you've run into or anything like that, I would be more than happy to go ahead and cover that. So before we start, um, again, is everybody able to hear me okay? Is that, that's coming through? Yeah. Awesome. It's those speakers. I keep trying to make it better, but it's, I mean. Uh, okay. Okay. Can you just slow down just a little bit? I can definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> I had that in the back of my mind when I was already talking, especially since I'm kind of operating uh, with the other computer speakers. So, and by the way, at any point, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen as I go along, but I'll also be kind of cutting back and forth. So at any point, if something is not clear, or if you need me to stop and maybe kind of go over something all over again, I am more than happy to do that. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that uh, through Zoom, technology that we're using for this session, I am also currently recording all of this session. So just as soon as we finish, um, I'll end the recording, I'll go ahead, save it, render it, and then I will send a copy of that to Perry and also into, uh, to Ashley so that this can be uploaded into your Canvas course and you can go back and then review it at any point. So we'll go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do first of all is go ahead and share my screen with my first part of our PowerPoint presentation. So if you will, bear with me for just a second. I'm going to go ahead and select this screen to share with you. Okay, and I am going to hide something here on my end as well. All right. Are you all seeing uh, the Emporia State University LI 801XO Introduction to Research? Yeah, yeah it's, um, it, you're, the two videos uh, are covering the middle, sort of the middle, uh, a column there's a sort of middle column in that's covered by the okay. videos so okay okay um i and i minimized some stuff from my end perry i don't um if you can minim, i don't know if you can minimize that from your end as well and then we'll be able to see a little bit more okay oh okay Minimize the video? Yes, the thumbnail. The okay. thumbnail videos. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, ah, ah, there you go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Me off. Oh, oh, oh well. That's fine. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We can switch back and forth. 
do. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, with this part of the presentation, I'm going to stay in this mode rather than, than switching to the slideshow. The reason is that I have found with Zoom, sometimes when I try to toggle back and forth slideshow and PowerPoint presentation, I lose everything in the process, and I absolutely not want to do that. So what I've done here is just giving you my email address, which is ckane1 at emporia.edu. And I really encourage you all to contact me with any questions that you have. And again, I'm going to go over that in a little bit as well. So right now, as I said, you've already had some introductions to research via LI810. But right now with LI801, we're actually going to be building upon the first part of research literacy for you all as beginning professionals in the SLIM curriculum. And I'm sure that you've had a chance to see this in your syllabus, and Ashley has probably started to introduce this as well. What we're concentrating on today will be something that's called bodies of knowledge. So essentially what I want to make sure you know how to do by the time we finish today is how to access the library's webpage how to access the databases for right now that are key not only to your research, also just to research overall in library and information science at this particular point in time. I'm also going to show you some tips um, for doing things such as locating the full text of journal articles when the full text is not necessarily available there right in a database. It would be nice if everything was 100% full text, but unfortunately that's not always the case. So I'm going to be going over that as well. We'll be looking at some LIS journals, we'll be looking at how to narrow a search, especially if you're dealing with a rather broad topic and you're thinking, how in the world can I really find what it is that I need on your topic? We're also going to get something called search language. And a lot of you probably already be familiar with this, how to put keywords together to narrow your search a little bit more. We'll be going over that as well. And finally, in terms of APA, you know in your SLIM curriculum that you are asked to use the APA citation style when you write your papers. I'm going to show you um, how to use citation tools within databases to start to generate APA citations but at the same time, I'm also going to give you some warnings about them because sometimes they're only as good as the data is actually used to those citations. So at this point, um, is everything going okay with you all being able to hear me? Okay, okay. That sounds great, thank you. I appreciate that. So, what I'm going to be doing is actually showing you today really two databases in particular. And these two may have already had a chance to search, but we're going to do some comparing and contrasting. These are the Library Literature and Information Science Full Text Database. And then another one that we have access to that's called LISTA, Library, Information Science, and Technology Abstracts. Now, with this database, um, don't be thrown just by the word abstracts in the database itself, this particular database also does link to a variety of full text journal articles, and I'll show you about that as well. I listed some others below that you will find when you go to the databases tab at the library's webpage, which we're going to do in just a second, and you go to the subject category of library and information science. These are children's literature comprehensive database, Encyclopedia of Library and Information Sciences, and Library <laughs> Literature and Information Science Retrospective. We're not actually going to be using these today, but I want you to be aware of them. Because as you start to go through your SLIM curriculum, and particularly when you start to get into classes in which you're focusing a little bit more upon specialized audiences and their information needs, these other databases may really come in handy. For example, Children's Literature Comprehensive Database. That's pretty obvious from the title. That's an excellent one for finding reviews and then links to articles about all aspects of children's literature. So how that would apply in a school library, a public library. <laughs> so again, we're not going to be going over these last three, but I want you to be aware that they do indeed exist. So what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to stop sharing this screen, go back over here, 
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share this screen in just a second for you. At this point, are you all able to see the Emporia State University's webpage? Yes. yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, the reason I'm starting with this is that there are actually several ways of getting to our library's webpage. You probably have noticed, um, for example, when you are already in your campus course and you're looking at your courses within your campus login, that webpage there's a link called Libraries and Archives. So if you are already in campus doing something of your courses, don't hesitate to click on that link. That link will automatically open up the library's web page and it'll open it up in a separate tab so you can do your searching there. If you already happen to be at the ESU web page, you can always scroll down to the bottom of the page and find a link that says Libraries and Archives. And when you click on that link, that will bring up our library's web page. Another way of getting directly to the library's webpage is simply just to type library.emporia.edu. And you don't put a www in front of that. It does redirect to another URL, but sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I just type library.emporia.edu and then I'm ready to go. And you're still seeing the library's webpage now at this point? Yes. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much. So for today, I'm going to be focusing upon three tabs in particular, the discovery search, database, and journals. So something that I do want you to be aware of when you start getting ready to search for information on your topic, particularly for LI-801 or for any other courses as well, the first tab that shows up with our library's webpage is something called a discovery search. So those of you who are currently working in libraries, I know that you're going to be really familiar with the concept of a library system or an automated system that's used to basically run your library catalog, probably also cataloging, maybe interlibrary loan and so forth. I, and ILS is another acronym for that. Our ILS for Emporia State University is something called WorldCat WMS, World Share Management this is completely web-based in the cloud, which is nice because it means that we're not reliant upon particular servers that may go down or anything like that. But the reason I meant this is that the discovery search, any type of system, has its strengths and drawbacks. I use the discovery search when I know I want to find items that are owned by the library at the Emporia campus, such as books such as physical copies of journals and so forth. I do not use the discovery search if I am looking for articles. And there's a really important distinction there. Now, it is perfectly possible if I use the discovery search that I will indeed find references to journal articles because WorldCat WMS pulls in a database called Academic Search Complete as well as what we have in our library and holdings from other libraries but it's not that reliable when it comes to articles, nor is it that precise. So, if I know I want to find peer-reviewed journal articles for my assignment, I'm always going to go to databases. So there's kind of a distinction there that I always want to make sure people um, are comfortable with. So we're going to click on databases. And when I do that, I get a list of our alphabetical uh, databases from A to Z. And if I know the name of a specific database, I can absolutely go to that particular letter and then go directly to that database. But often what I like to do is go to all subjects. And what we've done here is trying to cover all of the different majors that we have through Emporia State University. Um, I'm also the liaison for psychology and counselor education, which includes art therapy. So I teach a lot of databases in the context of art therapy education, and then also psychology. But we're going to go to library and information science. And I want to show you a couple of things that will happen with this page. 
Um, this is another way that you can reach me for more information. You can see my profile there, and you can also email me from that link too if you like. And also down here, this is where we have links to different research guides that relate directly to the field of library and information science. Um, I have one, for example, APA citation style help, and I'll give you the link to that as well. I have another link specifically for library and information management resources, and that covers a lot of what we're doing here as well. So as you can see, we have actually quite a few that are available here for you to use as Emporia State University students. I'm going to go ahead and click on Library Literature and Information Science Full Text first. And I'm deliberately doing this from my home base because I want to show you that even me here being in Emporia, so I'm off campus, I will still log into a database using my buzzing username and password. So I'm going to go CKane1, put in my password. I'm not going to store this. So that will probably look pretty familiar for those of you who have already accessed our databases. Now, what kind of I know about as long as I don't close my browser and I don't exit my actual browser search, from this point, if I were to go back to the library's webpage and click on another database, such as Lista, I won't be asked to use my buzz in username and password again. By the way, if you ever have any technical difficulties accessing databases, I really encourage you to contact me um, and I'll give you information about reaching out to my phone as well because it's something that I might be able to troubleshoot I'm really curious to know if you're experiencing any technical difficulties. So here we are in the library literature and science full text database. I'm going to go back real quick to our PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to stop this and share this again. And are you all now seeing keyword searching versus control vocabulary? Yes. yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I wanted to go back to this for just a second because when I go back to the library literature database, I'm going to give you examples of both of these types of searching. Um, you probably know, and again, those of you who work in libraries already have probably seen this with your patrons. It's perfectly possible to enter a string of keywords in Google, for example, and you know you're going to get some. You're going to get Results. I need to get the results that you're looking for uh, because it just depends on what is what actually comes up with Google first according to its algorithm of what it sees as the keywords that you're putting in and what it recognizes. A database is very, very different. I work a lot with undergraduate students, and I think um, how I have in terms of pedagogy and teaching is being able to make sense of that difference. A lot of people don't understand why they can't just go into a database and type in a long list of words that matches their topic and then not be able to find anything. Or find things that doesn't really their, their information need. Databases are still structured in the way that many of them need a number of years. And once you kind of have an idea of that, when you go one database to another, you're not going to be thrown by the searching logic. You will know that if you take that same type of searching mechanism and apply it to a totally different database that you've never searched before, you're going to know how to make it work for you to be able to find what you need and also be able to help your patrons on down the line. So, keyword search. Well, in many databases, keywords are actually searched across various fields of a bibliographic record. record database. So what in the world does that mean? One of my great interests is um, library assessment. I'm the director of assessment um, at the Emporia Campus Library. And so I'm always interested in finding information about surveys, focus groups, anything I can do for patients both on campus and off campus to make sure you get your information needed. But if I go into the library literature database and I just type in library assessment, I'm going to get so much information. And here's the other problem. That type of search is going to pull up the word library and the word assessment anywhere. It appeared to the 
Google text of the article uh, in HTML full text, something will come up. If the words appear in the title of an article, it will come up. If the words appear in the abstract of the article, it will come up as well. That's why it's with the keyword search. Now you're going to narrow the focus. That, that's what we're going to make. Um, Cynthia, your, your voice is cutting in and out. Oh, um, it is. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe, yeah, lean a little closer and let's do this. Yes, yeah, speak okay. a little more slowly, too. I sure can. Yeah. How's that now? You were, you were talking about the subject of library assessment, and if you yes. type as a key as a keywords, yes. you get those two words as they appear anywhere um, in, a, in a citation or an abstract. Yep, that's okay. it. Okay. Is that any better now the way that I'm talking? This is better, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, Carrie, thank you so much for giving me a heads up because I, I was leaning a little bit more away than I should have and I'll be sure to kind of slow down as well. So yes, that was exactly what I was uh, covering in that last part in terms of keyword searching. It has its strengths and its drawbacks. Keyword searching is really good if you are dealing with a topic that is very current or relatively current and you know it might not be covered anywhere else you're probably going to be able to do your best type of search with a key search. Control vocabulary, we're going to look at that as well. If you are familiar at all, the library catalog, something called the Library of Congress subject headings. Those are subject headings that are used to index and collate different records in the catalog, for example. Books, catalog, with the same subject. Well, Different vendors, different organizations have their own set of controlled terms. And those are known collectively as the concept of a controlled vocabulary. Now, depending upon the database, the controlled vocabulary may be listed as sub or it may be called thesaurus. But many databases will have something like that. That's probably one of the best ways of searching if you know that you have a very large topic if you have a broad topic that's been around for a long period of time, it helps considerably to see if you can identify a controlled vocabulary term that either matches that topic precisely or at least covers it, maybe in a broader context. You're going to have a much better chance of finding information in the database that really focuses very specifically on that particular term using controlled vocabulary. Harry, is that... Um, Vocal, is that a little bit better now? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So let's go back here. And what we're going to do is actually just try some different experiments with our searching. We're going to go back over here and go back to the desktop. Here we go. And now we should be back in the Library Literature and Information Science Full Text Database. Are you all seeing that? Yes. Yeah. Great. OK. So I'm going to show you a little tip that I always give, particularly for graduate students. If you are in any database that gives you an option between a basic search and an advanced search, always go to the advanced search. And the reason is that the advanced search is going to give you the option to limit your search so much more than you can just with a basic search. So I'm going to take my topic that I was just um, mentioning a few seconds ago, the idea of library assessment. What I want to do, first of all, is look at the way that I can limit my search. And one of the ways that I can limit in a variety of databases, not just this one, is to limit my search to scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Now, you might be thinking, wait, I'm in the Library of Literature and Information Science database. By that very nature, wouldn't everything in that database be scholarly and peer-reviewed? Not necessarily. The reason is that this database is very specialized in our library literature and information science field, and as a result, it's also going to include what we might consider to be trade publications or professional publications that deal with our profession that are not scholarly 
prepared with the American Libraries is an excellent example. American Libraries is the official publication of the American Library Association. So if you belong to the American Library Association, you can get a copy of American Libraries every month. Very informative. It tells you a lot about what's going on in the field of librarianship, but it's not scholarly or peer reviewed. But articles from that publication will also appear in this database. So that's why I always want to limit my search to scholarly peer reviewed journals. And I'm going to have a better chance of getting more of that precise information that's been reviewed and basically is considered to be scholarly in approach. There is another link back here that says full text. I encourage people to stay away from that, even though the temptation is very great to limit your search only to the full text of articles. The reason is that there's a very good chance in a database that you will find a citation or a reference to something that looks fantastic, but the full text may not be available in that specific database. However, there's also a very good chance that it may be available in full text in another resource that's owned by our library. Also, if you find an article that's available, but you see it's only available in print in our library, don't give up hope because you can use our interlibrary loan link on our library's webpage to request that a print copy of an article be scanned in PDF and sent to your student email. So there's more than one way of, re of, of finding that information and accessing it. So let's start with some limits here to sort of build our search. And you notice I'm doing something here. With these fields, I'm going to do a keyword search but notice that I said that I only wanted these to be in the abstract article. If you're doing a keyword search, again, remember that you can search across all fields of bibliographic record. If you limit a keyword search to the keywords as they appear also in this abstract article, you do have a better chance of narrowing that search. I'm hugely for using abstracts because that really helped me focus my need and decide if something's really uh, what I want or not. So I'm going to start a search with academic libraries. Notice that something is happening here. We have a suggested search turned on on this, very similar to the type of suggested search that you can Google when it starts coming up with suggestions. So I could say I just wanted to search academic libraries, but if I were interested planning in academic libraries, I could certainly click on that as well, and that would relate to assessment. But let's just do academic libraries. Now, notice something else that happened. This is one thing I really don't like with this interface. It will automatically start searching whenever you put in a word, which is okay, but it also means that right now I'm only searching for that type, for that topic of academic libraries in the abstract. And I really want to narrow that down a little bit more. So let's do academic libraries. And I'm using the word and. You may be familiar with and, or, or not. Those are the three most um, crucial words to use in keyword searching, because and can narrow a search. If I want academic libraries and assessment, that way, it will search for me automatically. I'm only finding right now items about academic libraries and assessment as those keywords appear in the abstract of an article. And you see that I have 131. That's still quite a few, but it certainly is very, it's doable. And you see that I have my limit here that I set to scholarly peer reviewed journals. If I wanted to narrow this even more, there's a nice little slide bar here that would let me actually narrow my publication date maybe within the last few years if I wanted to do that. But as you see, I am getting quite a few right now that are in PDF full text. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this first one using an information literacy curriculum map. And I'm actually doing some research right now on curriculum maps, so that would be a good look at. Since I do have the full text in PDF, I could just click on that and I could download it or print it or save it. Something that I can do over here, and please tell me if 
see this on your screen because I want to make sure you can see this. Over here on the tools on the right hand side, do you see something that says add to folder on your end? Yes. yes. Okay. That's a Pretty nice little tool that I've been teaching students to use lately. What that means is I go along in this database because I find articles or citations to articles interesting. I can go ahead and add that item to that folder. And I can keep on doing that as long as I'm within. That. Then, once I finish searching, I can actually hit email all of those results to myself or save them or download them. That's a way of keeping track as much as you go along with the information uh, that you might want later on. Let's go back to the result list. Because I wanted to show you, too, as I mentioned, not everything in this database is going to be 100% full text. And record number is an excellent example of this. We have an article that's called The Suitability of Web Analytics, Key Performance Indicators in the Academic Library Environment. I like that because it really ties into assessment. But take a look here. There's nothing here that says that full text is available. That simply means that specific journal has not made its full text available in the library literature database. So I want to take a second to show you what I would need to do next within this specific database. I would need to copy just the title of the journal. And notice I didn't copy the title of the article. Right now, I'm thinking about what I can find at the journal level. I need to see if the Emporia Campus Library has access to the Journal of Academic Librarianship in any form. To do that, I'm going to actually let me have to do this. If I didn't already have the tab already open, I would have to go ahead with another tab to the library's webpage. And I generally keep one tab open to the library's webpage in every instance, so I can always go back to that. So I'm going to click on this. So my next step now is actually to click on this journals tab. And I am going to paste the name of the journal and go ahead and search. And again, I'm thinking on the journal level. I actually have two choices here. The reason I have two choices is that William Allen White Library does have archived print copies of the Journal of Academic Librarianship. So we have access to older copies in print, and remember, we can scan those and send those to you. But I really want to see what we have for electronic access. So we're going to click on this one. And when I look at this, this tells me that in several collections, such as Science Direct Journals, Professional Development Collection, which is another database, we do have the Journal of Academic Librarianship available, but there's an interesting difference between the two. Take a look at this one. For Professional Development Collection, the coverage is from 1975 only up to 2004. If I remember correctly, the one that I wanted is from January of 2014. So even when you are looking at these types of things, you always want to make sure, when we go back to this, that you're checking the coverage very carefully because it may or may not match that. You also might find um, for very current journals, very current information, that everything might be available for the full text of the journal except for that current year. So it might say the coverage goes up to 365 days ago. It's something called an embargo. Publishers can place an embargo on the electronic full text access of their print journals. That is something that they can do, and they can negotiate with different publishers, with different vendors, and different databases. This is why sometimes we can get frustrated because the full text of an article should be there that the publisher may have placed an embargo on it. And that can be hard for us to understand. Imagine what it's like for our cases. Um, a lot of frustration can take place. So I can click on Journal of Academic Librarian and wait for this to do its thing. And remembering that I'm looking for, I click on this. January of 2014. 
I'll go ahead and click on this. And then I can just browse. And there's my article, The Suitability of Web Analytics. So even when you do this, when you copy and paste the name of a journal, you might have to just drill down a little bit more to find the best issue and then the article within that issue. So, but hopefully it will be available. I'm going to go back to this result list. Um, I'm going to click on record number three now because we had some luck with that keyword search when I was limiting that just to the abstract of the article. But remember, I was talking about the idea of a controlled vocabulary, and this is a good example. You see these subject terms that are actually hyperlinks. These are the controlled vocabulary terms within the library literature database that has been determined to match, most specifically, the indexing of this specific article. So I have campus planning, academic libraries research, librarians training of students research. So there are a couple of things I could do here. I could click on any of these controlled vocabulary terms and then I will find the articles that have been indexed under those particular subject terms. However, I could also go back up here to the top of the screen and at the top, um, sure people allowing you to see um, this top line that says new search publications SARS. Are you seeing that? Okay. 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 I'm going to go ahead and click on this thesaurus link. So this is another way again that I could search. So keeping my same idea of my search on academic libraries and assessment. Maybe what I would want to do is just browse and see how the word assessment is actually covered as a controlled vocabulary term. Look what happened here. It said the term that you entered could not be found. The list below is in alphabetical order. So what is happening here is that word of assessment is not necessarily a controlled vocabulary term with library literature. However, they have assessment of needs and it's telling me that needs assessment is actually a controlled vocabulary term that I can use. So you see, sometimes controlled vocabulary terms work beautifully, and other times when you type something in, they or may not quite match what you need. Um, so again, it just depends on what you're looking for and how narrow you need to get to that. I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to add this to my search. And I could just search on needs assessment <coughs> by itself. Now, this is a very interesting search. I'm sure you see now that something got added to this. It says DE. DE actually also stands for a descriptor. That's actually showing that I searched needs assessment as a descriptor, which is also another name for a SARS term or a subject term or a vocabulary term. Lots of different ways of, of referring to that. Something else happened here too. Notice that needs assessment was put automatically double quotation mark. That happened when I searched that as a controlled vocabulary term, but I can also take academic libraries, which I searched just as academic libraries the first time around, and search that within an abstract. And obviously, I still have a lot of information. But if I search a phrase, such as information literacy, such as academic libraries, anything like that, if you put your phrase, searching as a keyword search, you put your phrase, double quotation marks, so you might do with Google, that will force the database to search that as a phrase and keep it together as a phrase. So that's another way that you can make keyword search work for you a little bit more effectively. I'm going to go back over here, click on the back tab, and if I click on Victoria's University, link up here, back to the library's web page. I'm going to go back to databases, <coughs> back to library and information science, and I just wanted to do the same type of search in the library. 
Information Science and Technology Abstracts. And we'll let that come up as well. The reason I wanted to do that is I do teach many assignments, not only your assignments for 810 and 801, but some search both databases. Now, I don't necessarily combine both databases together to search simultaneously. The reason is that vocabulary, if I want to do that, I'm the, uh, is yeah. Cynthia, the yes. audio cutting in and out again. Okay. So. How's that? Is that any yeah, better? That's good. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. Uh, is that, that was, uh, oh, no, now, now it's not, now it's not picking up at all. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that's maybe, not, yeah, maybe see where the, the speaker is on your computer. Let's take a look here. Well, let's, let's do a double check. I'm, I'm yeah, that's here. very good. That's very good. <laughs> wherever, How was that? Where, wherever you were, uh, projecting your voice to earlier, that was perfect, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Let me go ahead and share my screen again. Hey, by the way, for letting me know that, because I can just start nattering on and then not realize that something has cut in and out, so I really do appreciate that. How's that now? So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so, what I was um, basically mentioning is that I don't combine the two databases on library literature and then LISTA and try to search them at the same time. The reason is that controlled vocabulary for both of those are not necessarily going to be the same, so I'm not going to have access to the robust searching that I would otherwise. So let's just real quickly do abstract again. And I am going to, this time, I'm going to use double quotation marks for academic libraries. And do my second term of assessment. And search again. And I can go back. And by the way, I forget first about following your review journals, I always do that on the screen so I can do this. And you notice that it's updating my search. And I, the information that I get here is going to be a little bit different. I now have 125 articles or references to articles. And the thing is, on LISTA, LISTA will pick up journals, library literature, and information science doesn't pick up, and vice versa. And that's why I really encourage you to use both of those databases to have, again, a little bit more of a robust search. So, something I wanted to show you, too, I'm going to get started for institutions collaborating on the information literacy assessment tool. That sounds really interesting. I need to do that. Um, when you basically, every database nowadays has some way of citing articles. I call cite citation but just about every database now has this option. The option here is called Cite. So I'm going to click on Cite. And you will notice that there are a variety of styles that I can select, including APA for what I need. So I could copy this citation and then paste that into my references list or into a working bibliography for my research assignment. But I am going to give you a big warning. Um, Perry will say this to you as well. I know Ashley will, and also any of our other SLIM faculty. These types of citation tools literally take the information that's already there in a bibliographic record, and they just import it into one or more citation styles. They don't do any, anything else in terms of correcting. But what does that mean? It means that if there are errors, like for example with APA, this one looks fairly good. With APA style, generally all of the following words, except for proper names, proper nouns, generally all the following words of the title of an article are in lowercase, except for the word. But if the original data or the metadata in the record had had these words um, capitalized, that capitalization would have been imported and brought into that as well. So be prepared to do a little bit of editing. Um, it's just something that's kind of a heads up. 
but it does help to be able at least to copy that reference and then put that, like I said, into a working paper or into a working blog. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that as well. Questions so far? How did you get how did you get to this citation format? Oh, absolutely. How did I get to that citation format? Let me show you that again. Thank you for catching me on that because sometimes I go a little bit fast. Well, what you notice here is that you notice over here, I don't have anything that says side or citation rules. Actually, it needs to be within that specific record. So if I click on record number one, we've seen this one before. We saw that one in library literature. Once I am in that screen looking at the record of the article, then site feature will come up and then I can click on site and then that's where my choices will come up including APA. Did that help? Yes. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Okay. And thank you because sometimes I go a little bit faster and, on that. And also you can uh, export if you have your own. <coughs> you can export it if you have your own citation software. Yes. Yes. And Perry, I'm glad that you mentioned that because some of you may have um, access to some free bibliographic management software. I use the Arrow, for example, and Mendeley is a number, another one. And yes, you can actually go ahead and export that citation. It's there with the bibliographic management software. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this screen because I want to go back to the last couple of points on our PowerPoint presentation. And again, just make sure that I'm answering questions that you may have either now or later. This was part of what I mentioned earlier when I was talking about using that search language, using the words and, or, or not. Another term for that for Boolean operators. So you could do and, or you can do or, and I should have put or there, so I'm just gonna change that right now. There we go. I'm sorry, that was correct. And, okay. So we do have and such as Cynthia, we don't see the uh, oh, that's right. Thank you. Let's go back over here. Thanks for letting me know that. And let's go back and here we go. Now you're going to be able to see that. Do you see that now with search language? Uh, now, yeah, we do. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. So again, this is just kind of a quick reminder of and or or not, which are also Boolean operators. And will narrow a search, or will broaden a search if you have more than one term that means the same thing. So I might want to search on information literacy and assessment or evaluation to broaden my search out a little bit more. The word not will eliminate terms that you don't want included in the search. And I really can't emphasize this enough. Use the word not with caution, because notice with this, I might say that I want records or articles in a database about information literacy, not technology literacy. Do you see the danger there? There might be some really good articles that talk about the concept of technology literacy that would really help me in my overall search, but I'm going to get to if I use the word not. So really do that with caution, only for terms that you know that you absolutely want to eliminate in a search. And I mentioned uh, before uh, using double quotation marks to sort of force your database to search for a phrase as a phrase. And that is a really helpful way of doing that. I've showed you, and I just want to make sure that you are comfortable with this again, so I left this for your PowerPoint presentation, finding the full text of articles. Now, I did notice, um, and I did, I did note here, and I want to show you this real quickly as well. I want to make sure have access to as students in Oregon because you are Emporia State University students and you have equitable access to information. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to close this, minimize this, and let's stop this sharing. And I'm going to go back just one more time to our web page. Here we are. And I'm going to return to the library's webpage one more time. 
Here we go. And you're seeing that again on the library's web page? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, if you, as I mentioned, say you find on that link that we have an article at the Emporia Campus Library that's only available in print, please do not turn away and say, well, I can't get access to that. I just, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this. I don't feel that way. If you find an article that's only available in print at the Emporia Library or in the Discovery Search, you can find books that are owned by the Emporia Library. We can get those to you. This is not very intuitive, so I don't want to, I want to make sure you know about this. If you went to this link where it says, I want to request an interlibrary loan, what we do is we use our interlibrary loan not only for borrowing books and articles from other libraries. We also use it for distance education students. So if I log in, you logged in, as a user to the password. If you've never done transactions in the library loan system, you're going to get a screen this one. ask you to enter your information, your student email address, your home mailing address, and so forth. You only have to do that once, and then you don't have to do that again. Then, from that point, you can put in a new request for an article, or a new request for a book, or media, if we had something to send to you as well, and you can fill out that request. So this is what the request for the article would look like. I would encourage you to find request this as a distance education student for an article in print or a book. Down here, where you have the notes field, from the library catalog, go ahead and add the call number of the book. We also have call numbers for our print periodicals, we catalog those library books. But see that on the catalog record. Go ahead and add the print periodical as well. And also make a big note that you are a distance education student. And the reason is that's going to be a heads up for our staff that, okay, this person is a distance education student. We need to get this material to them. Please, please feel like you can do this because we want to make sure you have access to all the information that you need while you were in the SLIM program. We don't want you to go without. Any questions about that particular part on uh, delivering materials? Virginia, when you do request a book, does it have to be mailed back? Is it the day, the day that's postmarked or the day that it's received? Oh, that's a good question. The question is, if you're mailing back a book, uh, is the, is the day that it's postmarked or the day, day that it's you know, I am not sure about that, and I would be more than happy to ask our interlibrary loan staff about that. I guess that Harry's should get that involved. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right information, and I don't have that right now. Thank you. Okay, if that's okay, I want to make sure that, that I get you the right information. So I'll be sure and check on, on that. That's a great question to ask. I am going to do kind of a wrap up here because again I want to make sure that I'm covering everything that you might have questions about but also realizing there we are are you seeing the slide for additional support now yeah. Yeah. awesome okay um wrap it up I gave you the link on this PowerPoint presentation to our Library and Information Management Resources Guide. This is a research uh, guide that I wrote, and it covers a lot of what we've already been doing. Um, I gave you a link to, uh, to a research guide that I wrote for APA Citation Help. Please keep in mind that I do not work for APA, and so what I have are just kind of little help features to get you started with quick citations for a references list. A lot of you may be familiar with the Online Writing Lab, AL for short, AL for you, APA Formatting and Style Guide. I love this site. This is a great way of looking at not only how to format and write APA citations, it will also give you a special research paper in APA style and kind of walk you through the process of the Set up. But also with the um, APA publication manual, but it's also good to see online. Finally, contacting me. I have voicemail, so if you called me at 
210-341-5480. I'll get your email and I'll get back to you. You can email me. However, if you are kind of still looking or figuring out how to search, I am more than happy to set up this type of Zoom session with you. Um, if you have a, uh, a camera, if you have a webcam, I can see you. But I actually don't have to have a webcam on your end because we still share our screens back and forth. So, like I said, if you had any problems searching and if you wanted to set up a Zoom appointment with me, just drop me an email. I'll send you a Zoom invitation and then we can share our screens back and forth and figure out between the two of us um, how to get information that you need most effectively. Questions at this point? I know I've gone over a lot. No, I think we're good, Cynthia. Oh, that's great. Well, I just wish you a wonderful rest of the afternoon. I know that you're having a great class with Ashley, and I will go ahead and say the smile, send that to Perry and Ashley, and hope to see you all again at some point. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>